And welcome to our Section 8 Recurrence Memory Palace Walkthrough. So as always, consider these section wrap-up videos to be 100% optional. I know they're kind of weird and they don't work for everybody, so feel free to skip it. But if you do like them, let's recap our last episode. We first met an air conditioner who got a second chance to be great thanks to one of Santa's retired elves. And then once restored to full greatness, this amazing air conditioner was so powerful that he created snow that was of such exceptional quality that Elsa and Anna from the movie Frozen, made their way all the way from Arendelle just to play in it. It's good snow. And then we heard the heart-melting story of a cold, leafless tree who had been telling herself that all of her troubles stemmed from the cold weather that this air conditioner created. But later, in an amazing turn, she found out that the key to growing a full set of leaves was simply to warm herself on the inside by having warm thoughts and that warmth will come through her branches and create leaves and the warmth that she craves on the outside and then it was on to meeting a cunning ladybug who got the last laugh on the joker by playing into his fear of batman and if that wasn't inspiring enough our final story was one about a woman who, unlike her friend, did not run away at the whole distance of a marathon when aliens landed and planted a big red flag into the ground, claiming Earth as their own. Instead, she raised up her sword to save us and the entire planet. We owe you a debt of gratitude. So now, get ready to continue our amazing adventures as we explore more of the Python Memory Palace. <laughs> So follow me over to these doors. Now once upon a time, Toucan Sam from the Box of Fruit Loops, he came out of these doors and he accidentally happened to run in to his doctor. Unfortunately, this wasn't the best meetup for him because as soon as the doctor said what he had to say, Toucan Sam got very scared. The problem is, the doctor told him that he's pre-diabetic and that he has been eating too much sugary Fruit Loops. So Toucan Sam had a couple choices at this point. He could give up the sugar, which we all know is the right but harder thing to do. Or he could play beer pong the rest of the night, forget about what the doctor said, and have a huge sugar overdose, which would make him truly diabetic. Toucan Sam, he's a man that we can learn from his addictions because he went over to this beer pong table with his buddy, and he played so much beer pong, probably 15 or 20 cans of beer he went through, which is an incredible amount of sugar and calories. And he woke up after being passed out over in this corner, a diabetic. He had a lot of regret in the morning, but his cries did not go unanswered because his cries were so loud, five famous superheroes all came to his aid. Okay, so Toucan Sam looks up and his cries for help have called five superheroes, the entire Fantastic Five. There's Rock Guy and Flame Thing and an Invisible Woman, and Stretch Guy, an African American girl who shoots lightning bolts. I, I don't know, I've never seen her before. But anyways, they, they quickly solve the problem. The stretch guy gets an EpiPen and, and shoots it into Toucan Sam's arm. And, and his diabetes goes away for just enough time to get to the hospital and get the prescriptions that he need. Another superhero group thing accomplished. But they all looked around and decided it was so easy. They really just need four members, not five. So they decided they would play a game of beer pong. And the first one out of the game, was kicked out of the Fantastic Five, and it would become the Fantastic Four. So they all stood around this table, eyeing each other down, and the first one out was the African-American girl, the lightning bolt one. That's a true story, and that's how they became the Fantastic Four. Now, once upon a time, over at this beer pong table, there were two sloths that thought it would be really fun to head to downtown Las Vegas and play a little bit of beer pong. But unfortunately, it was really sad because 
after they took all that time to get down here and then they got their beers and then they got to the table, they realized that they can't push their arms fast enough to throw the ball. It just kind of like goes up their hand and then they let go and it falls to the ground. There's no, you know, swing. You can't throw it like a baseball because you're a sloth. But then what was really cool is Fantastic Five came over and said, you know what? I'm going to help you guys out. I'm kind of a solo superhero now. But she came over and devised a cool little mechanical catapult from Plastic Spoons for them. And they could load those real slowly and then use their, you know, sloth claws to pull it down and then fling. And it would go up in the air and land in the other beer pong cup. So they were able to play an entire game that night. And it was the best night that the sloths have ever had. And they think that she's the best superhero and way better than the Fantastic Four. And that made her feel really good, too. And everybody was really happy. Now let me introduce you to this little cat box. He's sort of a prankster. He likes prank YouTube channels and pranks, prank shows. So he's all about the reactions. He loves people's faces after pranks. But unfortunately, he really only sees cats because he's a cat litter box. And they've got those like real stone cold faces with just kind of those triangle noses and I don't even think they really have lips or whatever. He doesn't get that reaction that he craves. One day he's like taking a stroll in the park, just minding his own business, and he runs into a jack-in-the-box. And this jack-in-the-box, he knows him from parties, and the jack-in-the-box is the life of a party. People will gather around and they twist it until he pops up. He's just talking to him like, man, I wish I was the kind of prankster you are. I just got these lame cats that do their business in me and you know people they always get after me for bathroom humor because I'm you know a cat box. Well the Jack in the Box is hearing his his problems and he's thinking to himself I need to start thinking more out of the box. So how about this cat litter box? I'm gonna get out of my Jack in the Box box and I'm gonna get into your cat box and get under the sand and so nobody knows I'm there and then when those little kittens come and those cats to do their business I'll spring out of the cat litter box. They'll never see it coming, and it'll be the best prank ever. So, of course, the cat box is like, yeah, let's team up, man. So he comes back, and they bury the jack, the spring, and the jack um, clown top thing under the, the dirt, under the cat litter. And then this cat comes by, just coming over to go to the bathroom. And then right before he gets into position, boom! springs into his face this jack-in-the-box and the cat is so scared he jumps like three feet in the air he's like Brah! you know and now cats do that all just totally spazzed out thing and runs off and goes and uses a different cat litter box and they get such a good laugh the jack-in-the-box hasn't felt youthful like that for a while and the cat box feels like he's got the prank his best prank ever and they high-five <laughs> Now I want to tell you about a sort of sad animator who has been colorblind since he was born. Great animator, but he can only do the outlines of his images. So all day he sits on this rocking chair and he rocks back and forth and he can make any cartoon, Mickey Mouse or Roger Rabbit or Bugs Bunny, you name the cartoon, he can do it. In fact, he even has his own um, and they're called the, um, the Narts. But the problem is that he's colorblind. And, you know, never being able to see what one of his cartoons looks like when it's actually filled with color has always bugged him. And one day he went out for a walk like he always does. He left the old rocking chair in his room and went to stretch his legs. And as he's walking down the road, he finds this magical generator, this gas generator that's been thrown off to the side. And he doesn't know it's magical, but he's compelled to, to bring it home. So he brings it back here and he sets it right next to where he sits and he uses it for inspiration. He draws some comic characters using it and, and things like that. But then one night his power goes out. So he hooks up his lamp to this special generator and as he plugs it in, a small little rainbow comes out. And it almost looks like color. He's wondering, did I just see color? A little spark when I plugged in my lamp? But he knows he must not have been because he's been colorblind his whole life. And then he turns on his lamp, and guess what? Everything the lamp shines on has color. 
So then he grabs it and he starts looking at like his chair, his wooden rocking chair and his animation area and other things on the walls. And he's like so amazed that there is color everywhere. It's just so cool to him. And he starts crying because he's so happy. It's the most beautiful thing that he's ever seen. And he's so happy that he found this magical gas generator. Now for a final story, I want to take you over here and, and have you meet a dog. And this, this is such a lovable, friendly dog. He just loves getting pet and chasing balls and things like that. You know, he's had one chip on his shoulder for a lot of years now, and that's catching his tail. He loves catching like tennis balls and frisbees, but he's never been able to get this tail. But then one morning he wakes up and he realizes that the tail probably isn't awake yet. And so this morning he jumps and he grabs it and he got it and he can't believe it. He finally got that elusive tail. He's so sneaky and he doesn't want to let go. And he's just looking around with his eyes so everybody can see what a good job he did at catching his tail. And he, he can't, he realizes that he's wrapped around a yield sign. Like a, he's like a donut with a pencil in the middle, you know, like the pencil is the yield sign and he can't get out because he won't let go of his tail. And he's like so distraught because he's like, oh man, I did it. And I want to show everybody I can't get out of this, this situation. But as the hours go on, he's so excited. He's like, this is great. I got my tail, but I don't know how to, you know, get out of this little circle thing. And I, I am stuck. And he finally is so exhausted. He just says, oh gosh, I've been working at this all day. I'll just do it tomorrow and take a quick nap. But I'm going to go to sleep with this thing in my mouth because I'm never letting go of my tail now that I got it. And he falls asleep. And then guess what? To his happy surprise, he wakes up in the morning, and there's the tail not in his mouth anymore. He's free. He can get away from this yield sign if he wants. He sees his owner, and, and he just he's just a happy dog. He's just happy to see his owner, and he doesn't need to chase that tail because he knows he could get it if he wanted, but it's not worth the cost of being stuck. He's really grown up. Finn. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.